Good morning. I'm Frank Reynolds. And these are the men who will make this historic voyage to the moon, the crew of Apollo 8. They are in their uh, command module right now. They've been in there since 534 this morning at Cape Kennedy when the hatch was closed. Uh, the weather at the Cape is perfect, and uh, astronauts Borman, Lovell, and Anders are all set to go. The weather at the Cape, which had caused <clears throat> some concern last night and uh, yesterday, possibly it might interfere with today's launch, has cleared up, and everything is now apparently uh, all set to go. Standing by at Cape Kennedy to bring us a late status report is ABC science editor Jules Bergman. Jules? What we're going to see happen after a liftoff uh, may seem slowly, may, may seem to take place slowly. It takes around two and a half minutes for those five F-1 engines on the main stage to burn out. We should see that clearly, we predict. There's nothing more than a little bit of scattered, bit of scattered light cirrus clouds over the Cape and out, and out over the Atlantic. We think our long-range cameras will see the separation and staging. Now, late word from launch control. Follow Saturn launch control, T-minus seven minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Still aiming toward our planned liftoff time. Spacecraft just test conducted to profit has just uh, completed a status check of all elements concerned with the spacecraft operations. All reported go, and there were three particularly strong and loud goes from the three astronauts in the spacecraft, 320 feet above the base of the launcher at Complex 39. Jim Lovell reported just a few minutes ago that he could see a blue sky and it looked like the sun's out. The spacecraft test conductor reported back that it's a very fine day. We're at T-minus six hours, 51, six minutes, 50 seconds and counting, and we are proceeding at this time. This is launch control. And so, some six minutes away from liftoff to continue the process of what will happen at liftoff, those main stage engines we've showed early, earlier, the five F-1 main stage engines, will burn for about two and a half minutes. When they burn out, the Saturn V will be hundreds of miles downrange from the Cape and at about 60 miles altitude over the Atlantic Ocean. Then the five uh, smaller engines, the J-2 hydrogen engines, in the second stage take over, and they'll burn until eight minutes and 40 seconds after liftoff, propelling... Uh, Apollo 8 almost, but not quite, into orbit. At that point, if anything went wrong, Apollo 8 would land somewhere w east of Africa, uh, out over the Indian Ocean. The final engine then takes over the third stage, J-2 engine, which indeed puts them into a 115-mile, statute-mile circular orbit around the world. And if that engine has done its job well, they'll fly in that orbit for some two hours and 46 minutes until they come up over Australia on the second revolution and thence begin the historic translunar burn to escape the Earth's gravity and head toward the moon. Now let's go back to launch control for late word from NASA's Jack King. Launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control at five minutes, 30 seconds, and our count is still go at this time. We've just completed further status checks here in the firing room at the control center. Here in the control center, we've had our status checks, and uh, the range has given a go, as, as has the uh, launch director, Rocco Patron. We are still counting, and we are go coming up on the five-minute mark in the count. Mark, T-minus five minutes and counting, T-minus five. At this point, the Apollo access arm should be coming back, and it is now moving back at the 320-foot level to its fully retracted position high atop the tower at pad A. Our countdown still proceeding at this time at the four-minute mark in the countdown. The overall count will be turned over to the launch vehicle test conductor. Ray Roberts, the launch vehicle test conductor, will conduct the final four minutes as all uh, different aspects uh, move over to the launch vehicle test conductor's channel. The uh, automatic sequence, as reported, will come in at the three minute and six second mark in the countdown. We're standing by at four minutes, 16 seconds and counting. This is launch control. And if we were in launch control at this moment, <clears throat> we would hear a mysterious chant going. A chant of voices that would say, go and launch commit, as they go up and down the consoles there in launch control, checking out every stage of the booster, every one of hundreds of key electrical systems, onboard computers, and items on the spacecraft. And the word is commit. And launch is now being handled, as it has been for the last two minutes, 
automatically by computers from T-minus six minutes on downward. No man's hand touches what goes on except to stop the process in case something goes wrong. It's an automated launch. It has to be. Let's hear late word from launch control now. Mark, T-minus three minutes and 30 seconds and counting. We have completed our communications checks with the Apollo 8 astronauts in the cabin, and the communications are go. Coming up shortly, we'll uh, be in the automatic sequence where we have a completely automatic uh, checkout of the launch vehicle from uh, three minutes and six seconds down. We have firing command. The firing command is in. We are now on the automatic sequence, T minus three minutes and counting. During this period, once we do get the firing command, the various tanks within the three stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle begin to pressurize. They all must be under pressure before we're ready to launch. We have a sequence status board here in the control room that will give us readouts on the overall status of the space vehicle as we reach the terminal phases in the countdown. Now, two, two minutes, 32 seconds, and counting. Our status board indicates that all aspects are ready, instrument unit is ready, spacecraft ready, final check of the emergency detection system, that ready light also on. First stage preparations are completed. Two minutes, 15 seconds and counting, the tanks continuing to pressurize in the vehicle. Not as many reports coming now as we all stand by in the launch vehicle test conductor's channel. Coming up on the two-minute mark on the Apollo 8 mission. Two minutes and counting. T-minus two minutes and counting. We are still proceeding. We now have uh, recorded that the uh, first stage uh, liquid oxygen tank has been pressurized and the pressure is still building up. One minute, 45 seconds and counting. We have a vehicle weighing 6.2 million pounds on the pad. Interestingly enough, some 1,200 pounds of that weight is just frost on the side of the vehicle created by the extremely low temperatures of the propellants. Coming up on 90 seconds, mark T minus 90 seconds and counting. The Apollo 8 uh, crew standing by, spacecraft commander Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, Bill Anders. We now have a report that the liquid hydrogen tank on the third stage is pressurized. One minute, 15 seconds. All third stage uh, propellants pressurized at this time as we come up on the 60 second mark on a flight to the moon. T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 60 seconds and counting. The vehicle now is completely pressurized. We're coming up on a power transfer shortly. T minus 50 seconds and counting. We have the power transfer. We're now on the flight batteries within the launch vehicle. 45 seconds. Final reports coming from Frank Borman at this time. Final uh, look at the switch list aboard the spacecraft. 35 seconds and counting. We'll lead up to an ignition sequence start at 8.9 seconds. This will lead up as we build up the thrust to a liftoff. If all goes well, at zero. We've just passed the 25 second mark in the count. 20 seconds, all aspects, we are still go at this time. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. The engines are armed. Four, three, two, one, zero. We have commit. We have, we have liftoff. Liftoff at 7:51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have cleared the tower.
about uh, nearly four miles downrange. Now through 42,000 feet, a speed of almost 2,000 miles an hour at this instant. Burning beautifully the whole way in a cool, crystal clear sky over Cape Kennedy. One minute for 40 seconds. All looks great. There's that majestic plume of flame behind the Saturn V as she thunders into the sky, gathering speed. The crew has been given a go for staging. She's now more than 30 miles high, 4,300 miles an hour speed. Frank Warman says the inboard engines. Two minutes, 25 seconds. There it is, staging and the burnout of the first stage the, uh, engines right on the money. See the first stage cut off. S2 has ignited, we can confirm. And the thrust looks good. All engines, all sources show the second stage is burning perfectly. Two minutes, 51 seconds into the mission. 6,000 miles an hour, more than 225,000 feet high, burning beautifully. Borman, Lovell, and, and Anders the, off perfectly. Uh, then released at the key. Three minutes into the flight, we're 50 miles high. There's the escape tower separating. And about 10 miles downrange. Three minutes, 25 seconds. We have, uh, we have verified that the tower has jettisoned. The crew has verified the tower is jettisoned. Every event taking place exactly as scheduled. Frank Borman says staging was smooth, and he says the ride now is even smoother.